Hey guys, welcome to Retro Crisis. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to configure Blurbuster's CRT Beam Simulator, which is a project that helps reduce motion blur and improve image motion clarity. I'll leave a link in the description below if you'd like to learn more about this project. Fortunately, the latest version of RetroArt, which is 1.20 onwards, should support the CRT Beam Simulator project. And I believe it's the first project to do so, which which is very exciting. So the CRT beam simulator is a pretty cool alternative to black frame insertion, which also aims to improve motion clarity. So in order to begin this project, you need to ensure that your display supports a refresh rate of at least 120 hertz. Obviously, the higher the better, but 120 hertz is the minimum your display needs to support. So for this video, I'll be using a display that supports 240 hertz. And if you're using Windows, if you'd like to double check your display's refresh rate, go to your system settings and display settings. And if you scroll all the way down, go to this section where it says related settings and advanced display. And if you click on that, you'll see a section that says choose a refresh rate and click on it. And here I'll be selecting 240 hertz. But if your display supports 120 hertz, feel free to select that. I do have another display which supports 144 hertz, but I found that didn't work so well with CRT Beam Simulator. So whilst your mileage may vary, in my experience, 120 hertz and 240 hertz works well. So I'll be selecting 240 hertz, and then you should be good to close this window. Right, so for this project, I'll be performing all of the configuration for CRT Beam Simulator on a brand new installation of RetroArch. Right, so once you've got RetroArch open, you need to change the video driver. And we can do this by going to Settings, Video, Output, and Video. So currently it's set to D3D11, and we want to change it to Vulkan. And then press Enter on Vulkan. And then once you've selected it, go back to the main menu by going back, back, and main menu and then go to quit. And then you need to quit out of RetroArch and open it back up again. And the reason we do this is so the video driver changes can take effect. Great, so once you've reopened RetroArch, go down to settings and then go to core and then press enter and then go all the way down to allow cores to switch the video driver. So currently it's set to on, but we want to turn this off. The reason being, some cores may try to change the video driver away from Vulkan. In order for the CRT beam simulator to work, the video driver needs to be Vulkan. So just make sure this setting is switched off. And now we can go back to the main menu again by going back and over to the main menu. And next go to online updater. And then once you're here, go all the way down to Update Slang Shaders. And then press Enter to update. We just want to make sure we have the latest version of CRT Beam Simulator. Great, so once that's done, go back to the main menu and go to Settings. And then go to Video. And then go to Synchronization and you want to make sure that vertical sync is on. And then once that's done, go down to shader subframes. Now this setting will not be available if you have not selected Vulkan as your video driver. So currently shader subframes is off. So just press enter on it. And then here you'll see a list of display refresh rates. And hopefully you'll see the refresh rate that your display is currently set at. So I'll select mine, which is 240. And then once you press enter on it, RetroArch may disappear for a few seconds, but hopefully it should reappear. And then it should take you back to the main synchronization menu. And then at the bottom where it says sync to exact content frame rate, G-Sync FreeSync, make sure this is off. And also double check on your system that you've not got G-Sync or FreeSync enabled. And also do the same on your monitor settings. So I'm under the impression that if you've got shader subframes enabled, that G-Sync and FreeSync should automatically be switched off. However, in my personal experience, I found that it did not automatically switch it off on my actual display. So just make sure on your computer and on your display, you've got G-Sync and FreeSync switched off just to be on the safe side. And now we can go back to the main menu by going back, back, 
and main menu. Now at this stage, just download whichever cores you want to download and import whichever games you want to import. If you need help on doing that, I'll leave a beginner's guide to RetroArch linked in the description. Great, so once you've got your cores downloaded and your games imported, just open up a game of your choice. Right, so the next step is to load up the CRT Beam Simulator, and you can do that by pressing F1, and then go down to Shaders. So currently video shaders is off, just press Enter to enable it. Load preset, Shaders Slang, and then go all the way down to Subframe BFI, and then CRT Beam Simulator. And then you should see this screen and you can press F1 to go back to your game. Now I'm not 100% sure how the recording is going to come out, so I'll have a recording on my camera on the side. But currently the screen has become very dark. But don't worry, we can adjust this. So press F1 on your keyboard and then go down to shader parameters. Now, because everybody will have a different type of screen, different refresh rates, some individualized configuration will be required. So there are two settings that we're going to want to play around with. So firstly is brightness versus clarity. Press enter on there. And then here you need to select a number. So I believe 71 is suitable for 240 hertz, but I'll give you an idea of what changes. So if we lower the number and go all the way to the bottom, and press enter and then press F1 to go back to your game, you'll notice the game gets incredibly dark. However, if you press F1, go back to brightness versus clarity, and if you go right to the top, 91, and then press F1 to go back to your game, you'll notice it gets brighter. So what you need to do is find a number somewhere in between that that looks good on your screen. So I'm going to leave it at this for the moment. Press F1. Next is gamma. So if you press enter on it, if you go all the way to the bottom, to number 5, and press enter, press F1 to go back to your game, you'll notice it gets incredibly dark. Press F1, go to gamma, and go all the way to the top, and press F1, go back to your game, you'll notice it becomes very bright. So with these two settings, gamma and brightness versus clarity, those are the two extremes. Now what you need to do is find a middle ground that works best for your screen. And that is how you configure CRT Beam Simulator. Anyway, feel free to experiment. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. This has been Retro Crisis. Thank you for watching.